We're God's Church of Love. We meet every Saturday, but not tomorrow. <laughs> so for that sake, we're meeting this Friday night. And I want to share with you about moving in the supernatural. We are getting ready to go into a move of God that is going to be new to a lot of us. It's like a person who doesn't know how to swim and all they've ever done is waded through two inches, four inches, a foot, uh, a calf deep, just wading. That means walking through the water. But resting in the water, becoming one with that water, means there comes a point where you can actually kick your feet up, lay back and rest and float. But you need to learn to swim. And some of you have not learned to swim in the supernatural. I am still learning to swim in the supernatural. I can get in water and I'm in my element. I can swim, I can backstroke, I can float, side stroke, I can tread water, I can do whatever. I love the water. I'm at home in the water. But most of us as born again Christians are not at home in the supernatural part of the walk of God. The supernatural power of God is not a common occurrence to most of us. The supernatural power moving in our lives is not a daily occurrence, unfortunately. And many of us, including myself, we're still learning all that we have access to in the supernatural. But we're not what you would call special ops. I want our group, I want God's Church of Love and our YouTube family to become special ops in the supernatural. I want us to be able to shoot miles away from the target of the enemy and hit the devil, hit the, hit the demons, hit the imps right between the eyes kicking right out the ballpark. Want to be able to rebuke fear. We want to be able to expel this and expel that and do deliverance ministry. We want to be able to lay hands on each other, lay hands on others and pray and see them get healed instantly. That's the kind of supernatural power that we should be moving in. But for the most part, we're not. We hit and we miss. And we do a lot more missing than hitting. We pray and lead people to Christ. And after we lead them to Christ, they're still struggling with their flesh. There's something missing. And I'm asking God to show us what it is we need to do I know when the disciples had a hard time delivering the boy, Jesus said some only come out by prayer and fasting. So we have to get more into prayer, more into fasting, if we want to see the works of God in the supernatural. But unfortunately, many of us haven't even conquered our own flesh. We're still living in the flesh. We're operating in the flesh. We're reacting in the flesh. We got attitudes that are wrapped up, tied up in the flesh. Not in Jesus, but in the flesh. So we're so busy battling ourselves and our own demons that many of us don't even have the time or the wherewithal to battle on someone else's behalf and get results. I'm going to share a few testimonies so you get what I mean about operating in the power of the supernatural. The few times that it worked for me, one was Pat's children were playing um, on a, a Sunday afternoon. They were doing fine. They went to morning service and I mean, they were doing great. And that Sunday night, I forgot. I think it. I think it was going to be my first sermon. This was twenty years before I got ordained, and I remember Pat was determined. That's you know the one who comes to our meetings. 
Pat was determined to come to my first sermon. But all of a sudden, she called me. She, she said, I don't know what happened. The kids were fine all day. And now all of a sudden, they're both down and they're sick. I mean, they it's like something just came on them. They're running temperatures. They're sick. They're lethargic. And I'm not, you know, going to be able to go. And I got so angry at the devil. I prayed over the phone with her, but then I hung up. And I kept praying. I was so angry. And I think sometimes some of us actually have to get angry. We have to say, enough! An attitude. Something has to rise up in us. A righteous indignation. How dare you pick on two-year-old babies? How dare you do that? How dare you victimize? I mean, I was so upset. I didn't know what to do. So I rebuked. I took authority. I command you to take your hands off those babies. You go back to hell where you came from. I rebuke you. I bond you. I shut you down. I cancel the assignment. I was covering them with the blood of Jesus. I was doing everything I could. I was so upset. I was crying my eyes out because it reminded me of how people beat on people. That's the reaction I got. How dare you beat up on your wife? She's defenseless. She's pregnant. You're kicking her in the stomach. How dare you give her a black eye? I have a real issue with people who victimize other people. I really have an issue. That's that's something that could almost make me want to commit a crime to stop it from happening. So (laughs) I got so passionate in this prayer. After that, I started, I kept studying for the message that night, you know, working on the last minute notes. And Pat called me and she said, guess what? I said, what? She said, all of a sudden they're fine. They're up, they're running, they're clowning, their fever's gone, they're doing great. And I said, Lord, I thank you for that. But that should happen every time we pray for people. So (laughs) sure enough, She was able to come and the kids never got sick again. I mean, that week, they were fine. You know, (sighs) this is going to be more of a talk than a sermon, but you can pull up the scriptures where Jesus ministered. This was on my heart all week, moving in the supernatural. And I'm going to go with what was in my heart. Some of us are living so far beneath our privilege because. We don't know that if we want to. Oh, I don't know why I feel like crying right now. Wow. Some of us don't realize the power. What we have in our arsenal. What God has given us. The abilities he's given us. The supernatural abilities he's already put in us. So many of us. So many of us have never even seen a demon, have never seen an angel, have never seen anything in the invisible realm. We've never seen, we've never discerned, we've never heard a voice, we've never, it's just never happened. And many of you see demons in your dreams and you don't even realize that's what you're experiencing because God's trying to teach you spiritual warfare. I'm going to share with you some of the demons I have seen, either in my dreams or wide awake. And yes, I saw a demon of suicide. And it took a while for the Lord to explain to me through revelation, supernatural revelation, that the demon of suicide was there to make my sister kill herself. And the demon showed himself in my house. And years later, after walking with the Lord, the realization came that God made that demon manifest in my house so I would know I needed to battle him. And then as God explained to me through the dream, he was showing me that I was battling a spirit of suicide that was there to make my sister take herself out. And, and that I had won the battle even though I didn't even know what I was fighting for. So sometimes when you get close enough to God, you know, we 
we see sore, we get close, then we get, you know, lethargic or relaxed, or as they, the Bible says, at ease in Zion. But those moments when you're close, you have the ability to see into the supernatural, to see into the invisible realm. Now, the demon I saw was invisible, but I could see him. It was like a solid shape. If I, The best way to describe would be as if I could tell you I saw the invisibility, but I saw the shape. It's hard to explain it when you see it. But I saw it, and it looked exactly like the Spider-Man. But instead of, instead of in color, it was all black. And the only thing that lit up was the smile. It was like the evil smile of the Chester cat and the eyes looking at me and this evil grin. And because I was only two months walking with the Lord, I was as scared as I could be because I had never seen a demon. I felt evil before. And as a side note, for those of you who are not saved, Keep your Bible on hand because demons are going to be rearing their ugly heads more often now. But not being in Christ, you don't have all the arsenal we do, but you have the word of God. And Jesus quoted the word to Satan and shut him down with the word. It is written. And the two times I experienced the evil presence of a demon when I was unsaved, I read Psalms 23, the 23rd Psalm out loud, and that's how I got rid of the demon. It didn't go instantly like it does now, but at, at least it, it sent him packing. It took a while, maybe five minutes, but he went away gradually. But I read the Psalms 23, and that did the trick. For those of us who are saved, God can open your eyes into the spirit realm and you can see a demon. You can see an angel. I've only seen one angel and that was in a dream. And it was a giant of an angel. And I knew that was my guardian angel. I just knew it. But, and it was a male. But what I want to share with you with demons, I have seen demons that had hair like, like, um, like yarn, like a head full of yarn. And the face was the face of burlap. And everything was black, everything from head to toe. The outfit was black. And male or female, it was the same appearance. You could just tell. I don't know how I could tell, but I could tell the female demon from a male demon. Isn't that weird? But I want to share this with you. If you begin to experience demons, the first thing I want you to read is Ephesians. Before you ever experience it, I want you to read Ephesians chapter 6. Just read the whole chapter. Just read it. It'll show you about putting on the weapons, of uh, putting on the spiritual armor to protect yourself. I want you to read that, and I want you to read about how Jesus dealt with demons so you will know more accurately how to deal with them. You get rid of them through prayer, through reading the word, through out loud at them, or quoting the word at them, rebuking them in the name of Jesus, and praising God. And another way that you resist the devil is through obedience, that you have to engage your will. And there are times when that happens till it hurts, but you have to stand your ground. And a lot of times deliverance comes through that type of determined obedience. But we have to learn to walk and live in the supernatural. We have to begin to expect it. Don't think of it as something that only happens to big name evangelists. No, this is something that's accessible to a little child if they believe in Jesus Christ. There are miracles. A couple was driving through a multi-car accident on the freeway and they saw the 
the whole beginning of the accident and one car flipped over in front of him and another one skidded in front of him and they hollered, Lord Jesus. And it was as if the whole accident, it had to be about 10 or 15 cars involved. But everything that happened moved out of their way as they approached it. And it was as if they witnessed the parting of the sea and they went through that accident totally unscathed. Lynn mentioned how she heard God's voice say, in the back of her head, say, Jesus save me. She was, huh? But she said, Jesus save me? Right after that, she noticed the big rig on her right and a box had fallen from it right in front of her car. And it somehow it escaped from doing damage to her. And God protected her. Now, I'll let her tell it at another time. But right now, for the sake of time, I'm expressing how things can happen on the road. A man was driving on a truck, a big rig. And he forgot. He didn't completely connect the two things together so that they don't, you know, come apart. There are certain things that are big rig. They have to uh, get that truck roadworthy and they have to lock everything in place because one thing is pulling another and they can't afford for it to fall apart on the road. So he thought he had connected it correctly, but he hadn't. And he's on that freeway driving and he notices there's a man, a big man, hanging on the side of his truck and he sees him in the mirror and he's well, what the heck is this idiot doing and he's driving and he's driving and he's driving and he he keeps looking in the mirror wondering well, what is this guy and finally he gets to his destination because he was on a time squeeze so he gets where he's got to go he parks where he's supposed to park and he jumps out to ask the guy what's going on because the guy was on that truck till he put that thing in park he opens the door. The man is nowhere to be found. And when he goes to look to see if the man is somewhere in between the cab and the and the thing he was pulling, it was totally disconnected. Totally disconnected. There was nothing holding it together. And that's when the Lord revealed to him that man was an angel keeping that truck together to protect everybody on the road and him. So <laughs> what I'm trying to share with you, it, there are angels around us, just like there are demons around us. And he was able to see the angel. One man was on the road and he dozed off behind the wheel. That's why I pray, it play, <laughs> it pays to pray before you hit that road always. And this man was driving. I guess he had preached. He was tired. He was dozing off and he felt his car slowing down as if he was a passenger and someone hit the brakes, but he was behind the driver's seat dead asleep. And the jolt woke him up. And when he opened his eyes, there was a man with his hand on his hood in front of the car. But the car was still moving and the man was moving right along with the car. His back was toward the direction that the car was headed, but he was facing the driver with his hand on the hood. It was an angel that stopped the car. He had his hand on there till the car came to a complete stop. The driver was, was jolted awake. He was shocked. He puts the car in park. He jumps out the car and the man's gone. He's nowhere to be seen. This guy was on the freeway. There was nowhere for that man to go. God protected him. He guided him to the shoulder and put that brake on and put that car. The driver put it in park, but it was the angel that stopped the car because the man's feet were still on the accelerator. That's living in the supernatural, y'all. That's living in the supernatural. There are, are angels around us. There are demons around us. And there are, you have got to get in the habit of praying 
before you go anywhere. You've got to get in the habit of saying, Lord, keep my car together. Keep my tires filled with air. If you got to hold it up and keep it full with angels blowing in the tires, do whatever you got to do, but keep me safe going and coming without any accident or incident. Protect me from all others and protect all others from me. Why? I could fall asleep behind the wheel just like that guy did. So you have to constantly pray, no matter where you go, no matter what you do. Lord, open my eyes that I might see what you need me to see at that moment. Open my ears that I can hear your voice when you need to warn me, when you need to tell me, turn left, stop the car, don't go, speed up, whatever. Or like the Lord spoke to Lynn, you got to have an ear to hear y'all and you got to pray for it. You can't just assume upon it. You pray because the more you ask God for, the more you're going to get. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. My question to you is, are you asking? Are you knocking? Are you seeking? Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. That means knock and keep on knocking. Ask and keep on asking again and again and again. Seek and keep on seeking. Some of you are so afraid of disappointment that you ask once and then just throw your hands up and walk away from the hope of your prayer. And you just wash and flush your faith right down the toilet. Ask and keep on asking. You want to experience God? The only way that's going to happen, babe, you got to keep on asking. Keep on asking. I was constantly bombarding every prayer I prayed. When I get through, I said, Lord, don't forget, I want to experience your love. Within two months of walking with the Lord, I experienced God in my living room. Mm -hmm. By myself at night, 11 o'clock at night, here comes the supernatural love of God. And in that love was God. And the scripture came to my mind while I was bathing in his love. God is love. And I knew what God was telling me. This is me. This love you're feeling. This is me. I'm wrapping myself around you. I'm engulfing. That was a supernatural experience, y'all. That one experience holds me and my faith, my commitment to God to this day, because I got a chance to feel how much he loves me. Ask God to help to open your eyes, open your ears, sensitize you so that you can be aware of the supernatural that's going on around you and you ha and give you supernatural instincts, godly instincts. So even if you normally would not know what to do in the spirit, you know exactly whether to walk, whether to be quiet, whether to speak, whether to look, which way to look. God will let you know. You will even have godly supernatural instincts. But you have got to ask God constantly for that ability. Because that ability only comes from God himself. Amen? So, trust God. Whatever you do, trust God. Lean on him harder and harder. Seek him. Get into that word. Read, read, read. Pray, pray, pray. Ask, ask, ask. Seek, seek, seek. Don't seek just his blessings. Don't seek the goodies and the gifts and the power. Seek God. You're not going to hang around me. If all you want me to do is give you a ride here and give you a ride there and give you a ride elsewhere, and then the next thing you want is you want me to pay for this and you want me to pay for that and you want me to lend you money and you want me to do this and you want me to do that, but then when you don't have any needs, I don't hear from you. You don't have any needs. You don't have time for me. You hanging out with your friends. But you only call me when you need something. And I get to the point where I hear you call and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, what do they need now? 
Imagine how God feels when people aren't interested in seeking Him, getting to know Him, feeling His touch, seeing the beauty of the Lord. And He's beautiful. Now, even though I've never seen Him, being in His presence, you just know it. <laughs> you can feel the beauty. <laughs> Anyway, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. God bless you as you seek the Lord, as you seek what he has for you in the supernatural, as you ask, knock, keep on asking, keep on knocking, and keep on seeking. In the name of Jesus. Do that. If you start right there after you've given your heart to the Lord, you'll be amazed at what you can experience. Amen. Amen.